I've got sand on my script. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a huge fly fisherman. Welcome to another episode of Huge Fly Fisherman. Today's episode is Redfish Basics 101, Introduction for Beginners. One thing you should know is that I didn't learn any of this myself. This was all taught to me by other people. Mentors, if you will. That's kind of how fly fishing works sometimes. Let's go check in with my friend Ron in Louisiana. He knows more about red fishing than any of us. I think redfish are just about the perfect fly rod fish. I mean, they're abundant. Redfish also grow big, they pull hard, they take flies readily, but they get difficult just often enough to keep it interesting. And I think what makes them the best fly rod target is that redfish are the strippers of the fish world. They give more of a visual display above the waterline than any fish I've ever seen. They'll tail a lot, they'll crawl along banks that are shallow with their cleavage showing out the water. They really, really give you a visual sight fishing display. Really, if there was any one thing I would change about redfish it would be that they can't jump you can fix that then you really do have the perfect fly rod fish seen it looks like a mini redfish right there well first of all where can you find redfish i'm not a fisheries biologist actually i did go to school for that you can find redfish all over the east coast of the u.s from maryland to mexico did you guys know that i'm from maryland originally it's true redfish are all over the place but for us as huge fly fishermen we need to look for them in shallow water shallow water meaning like three feet or less Three feet might be pushing it if the water's not clear, but it's doable. And if you ever find a tailing redfish in three feet of water, you know it's gonna be a big one. I know from experience. Uh. Just like any fish, redfish are gonna be wherever the food is. And for redfish, that's mostly shrimp, crabs, and bait fish. Maybe some fried chicken too. Let's check in with Ron again. With the broad general patterns that we target redfish in for sight fishing here in Louisiana, is number one, fishing the interior backwater ponds. We look for ponds that have aquatic grass in them because that helps clear up the water. Also tends to hold bait, which tracks the redfish. Hey look, if you start seeing grass and clear water and crabs, get ready because chances are you're gonna see redfish. Now the other broad general pattern that we target redfish here in for sight fishing in Louisiana, we're fishing the outer edges of larger bays and lakes or even out of the barrier islands. What I tend to look for is uh, areas that have a lot of oysters, also cuts and drains and if you have an area with cuts and drains and oysters that's usually money maybe i should point the camera at myself the places where you can find redfish vary geographically and that's one of my favorite things about redfish you can catch them in so many different environments in the low country you might catch them in flooded grass i've caught redfish in a lot of places and i think in the flooded grass is super weird it really is dude yeah i got lots of flooded grass shots today with no fish in florida you might catch them on turtle grass flats in mangroves, or even over white sand. And then in Louisiana, the redfish are pretty much just everywhere. Go to any Walmart parking lot and you'll find them. This is my friend Mike. Hey Mike, when you're trying to find redfish, what should you look for? You got your tailors, you got your snakes, you got your crawlers, you got your fluffers, floaters. You also have your diggers. There's a lot of different types of tailors. Tailor, obviously, tail. Got it, right? But there's different kinds of tailors. You got a digger. Now a digger, he's got his whole ass out of the air. He's got his head down and he's just going all kinds of way. No pattern, no direction, very, very hard. Generally with a digger, I just slap them right in the face and they either eat it or they run away. And you have a tipper. He's moving on a straight line. It's tip, tip, tip. Easy to track. Very, very happy fish. Very fun fish. Then you have a snake. And a snake, he's just crawling through really shallow water. You got his back and his tail. Also fairly easy, but very spooky, so you need to lead that one a lot more. Then you have the floater. The floater's in deeper water. He's sitting up high so you can see him, and he's just kind of, well, floating. Those are really tough because they're not super happy fish, so you gotta lead them, try not to let them see your shadow. Uh, however, they can be caught. And then, like I said, just a classic tailor. Those are nice if they're kind of predictable and putting their tail up, that's it. But, you know, they're all different. Look for wakes, pushes, tails, backs, Flashes, but make sure they're not mullet. You will get fooled a lot. I know I do. Learn to recognize what is bait and what is redfish. You're gonna see a lot of mullet. If you see fish zigzagging all over the place, you don't need to get all excited about it. That's not redfish, that's mullet. Here's something, if you're seeing wakes, don't cast at the wake, cast in front of it. Okay, so what fly should you use for redfish? I think the most important thing to realize is that the fly pattern itself doesn't matter so much. It's more about the characteristics of the fly and how you fish it. Redfish are like carp. Oh my God, who's tired of that comparison? If you can get a fly in front of their face without scaring them, they're probably gonna eat it. Maybe the most important thing is how heavy your fly is. How much weight? Are you gonna fish a fly with big dumbbell eyes? 
maybe it's a bead chain, or no weight at all. It depends on how deep you're fishing. You might consider putting a weed guard on your fly if you're fishing around a lot of grass or maybe even oysters. Just make it shrimpy, crabby, or fishy. You know, it's always been kind of a dream of mine to catch a redfish on a woolly bugger. Maybe someday. You're gonna have a basic leader, nine or 10 feet, 10 or 20 pound tippet. All right, let's talk about tactics. Super tactical. I mean, you like to be tactical, right? A little yes, a little no. It's not that complicated. Luckily, redfish are pretty forgiving. Just get the fly in front of the fish. Yes, I know that can be hard sometimes. Maybe you're terrible at casting. I'll say it again. Watch my casting video. Maybe you can't see. Maybe you don't know how to listen to your guide. So how far in front of the fish do you put the fly? Well, I say this a lot, but it depends. Are you casting at a single fish or a group of fish? A lot of times single fish will be spookier and you have to lead them a little farther with the fly. You wanna land your fly in the fish's path so it intersects with the fly and eats it. That sounds really complicated. The redfish are going to be moving and you want to land that fly in front of them so they see it. Let me clarify that. You don't have to cast the fly right in front of the fish. You can cast past his line and strip the fly in so he'll see it. If the water's slicked out and the sun is bright, you have a higher risk of scaring the fish with your fly. If the water's dirty or the sky is cloudy or there's some chop on the water, you can get away with a closer presentation. You can land the fly closer to the fish. So I guess the short version is land that fly as close as you think you can without scaring them. Sometimes that's 10 inches, sometimes it's 10 feet. It depends. If you have a group of redfish, they might even race each other to the fly. Did you know a group of redfish is called a murder, just like crows? If you're fishing clear water on the beach, you might need to put that fly far away. If you're fishing flooded grass, you might need to hit them on the head. Pro tip, here comes the pro tip. Are you ready for the pro tip? If you can see the whole fish, cast at its head, not its tail. They eat with their mouths, not with their butts. You might be wondering about tides and how that relates to red fishing. Well, the short answer is that it doesn't. The fish are there all the time and they're eating. The long answer is that red fishing can largely depend on tides and that's gonna change from location to location. Not just from state to state, but maybe even in the same, what do you call these, watersheds, drainages? Smaller scale, like this certain creek and river system. Also, I don't really understand it all because I live in the mountains. Okay, that wraps up another video. That's Redfish Basics 101 Introduction for Beginners. Did you write all that down? You now have the tools to go catch a redfish. Get after it. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I will see you next Monday. Stay huge. Stay huge. Hey, germs. Yo. What's one thing everyone should know about redfish? Don't get too caught up in it. They're not as hard as it seems. This is my friend Mike. Ah. Hey Mike, what's one thing everyone should know about redfish? They're not that hard to catch. This is my friend Alex. Alex, what's one thing everyone should know about redfish? They don't eat. Hey Larry, what's one thing everyone should know about redfish? Redfish are moody. No. This is my friend Mike. Mike, what's one thing everyone should know about redfish? They all suck, but the ones that eat. Hey, this is my friend Joe. What's up, players? Joe, what's one thing everyone should know about redfish? They're dumb. They're really dumb. <laughs>